a blank white screen. A text box appears, letter by letter, the weight of inheritance, cruising, with an I missing, the cursor deletes and retypes. Cruising Joyce's house. Text remains on screen a few seconds, the cursor reappears, the delete key wipes the screen blank. Then, webcam shot of the artist wearing a headset in their studio addressing the camera. The artist will be a small inset on screen for this video. We start on YouTube at Diana Rouse's video for It's My House, then navigate to the Bosley Real Estate Brokerage website for a 3D tour. All right, let's start. Um, start with this. And so I'm going to take you to 497 Queen Street East in Toronto, Canada. Um, and I have visited this website a few times, and I'm also a bit baffled that it is still there every time I come back because this house has been sold for two years, yet the realtor, Ron Riemann, um, in Bosley, they just keep it up, um, which I actually truly appreciate because it allows me my memories of the place and a few other things. So uh, just to get yourself situated, um, this direction is west. Um, and towards this direction is east, and we're on Queen Street right now. So if you go further this way, um, you'll get to the Don River. And right now we're standing in front of what was once Joyce Whelan's house. And this is a legacy Toronto plaque that Jane Rowland, who moved in to Joyce's house after Jane, sorry, after Joyce died, um, rallied um, the city of Toronto to get put up. So it's not an architectural designation. Um, so renovations can and have occurred, um, but it's more of a cultural one. So yeah, I've been in this house twice. I've been in this house in 2016 at the invitation of Jane Rowland, who was living there at the time. And then I was in this house another time in 2018 at the kind of lukewarm invitation of the people who bought it from Jane. Uh, and yeah, just for some dates, I don't know when Joyce Whelan moved into this house. I know she moved into it to originally use as a studio when she broke up and divorced her partner, her husband. Um, she moved into it full time and uh, continue, continued to make her work there, but also to live there. And she passed away. So Joyce Whelan passed away June 27th, 1998. She was 67 years old. And in 1999, Jane Rowland bought the property, brought the house from uh, Joyce's estate. And Jane lived in the house until October 31st, 2017, when she passed away, also at 67 years old. And I met Jane first in 2016, when she wrote me uh, an email with the subject heading, Raisins over passion, indeed, um, which of course is a riff off of Joyce Whelan's um, fabulous work called Reason Over Passion, and also the name of uh, a, a zine, let's call it a zine, a zine of mine, Raisins Over Passion. Anyways, uh, all this to say, I brought my partner Kate to 497 and Jane invited us in. She seemed very happy to meet another Joyce Whelan fan. And um, Jane's work, uh, and I don't mean the PR work she did for money, but her work um, for this house and for Joyce, Joyce's memory was really to create kind of a, a very unofficial um, house museum for Joyce Whelan and a few of the things she very eagerly pointed out when we first got there um, were located in this room, which is the sort of uh, living room. Um, there are a few photos I've seen of Joyce using this area as a dining room. And there's this one picture, which I absolutely love and couldn't find again. Um, it's lost in the, the veins of the internet, had Joyce sitting here at her dining table. And um, of course, not of course, it feels like an of course moment, but um, these this sort of dark wood halo of bookshelves um, 
sort of sat above her in this very uh, kind of amazing regal way. So while Joyce, I don't think she actually made these with her hands, she did have them put in um, as well as uh, these bookshelves right here. And when Jane was telling Kate and I about the space, she, you know, scaffolded it with this other thing that she had to kind of contend with, and that was owning, you know, a crumbling house um, and not having a whole lot of money. She lived um, in this house by herself, and as I said, she worked in PR, and um, yeah, it's a three-story house, so a, a huge commitment, and um, at one point, and it was in, it was 11 years after Jane moved in, she got, I don't know if got is the right way to put it, but she invited um, Justin and Colin and or Colin and Justin of Colin and Justin's home heist. And I actually can't remember if it's Justin and Colin's home heist, but home heist is uh, one of those home renovation shows that aired on HGTV, which I think is home and garden TV and where they would go in and uh, renovate a place. And, you know, the owners would be so happy because they didn't have to pay anything. And, and TV, a TV show was, was sort of uh, made from it. Um, and so Jane was very adamant to tell us when they came in to, take care of her crumbling home. She had them write, she had them sign um, a contract that they wouldn't touch any of the sort of infrastructure that Joyce had put in. And so this, um, as I, I like to call it a halo of bookshelves, I'm sure there's a, a more official word for that. And, um, and this right here weren't touched. And uh, I've got a little image that I can show you that um, attests to that in a really nice way. So the interactive tour remains open in a web browser paused on the dining room with its lemon yellow walls and dark wood built-ins. The screen recording back. catches the artist pulling up and shuffling through three different photos, including one of the plain exterior of Joyce's house and bare birch trees. They settle on one photo, a colorful Persian rug on the wood floor. So here we've got as the caption said, Joyce's living room and blonde wood shelves lined with books. If you'll see, if you look up here, we've got this little head that still exists in Jane's living room and these shelves up here while they were removed um, to put a TV in, which I support. I enjoy watching TV on a larger screen. I admit it. Um, she did keep them upstairs. So you'll see them on the third floor when we go up there. The living room picture stays on screen a few more moments. Here we go, and we'll head back. Photo is replaced with the browser-based house tour. Yeah, so here we are. And yeah, this was the first room we went into, and yeah, I was really struck with how um, adamant Jane was to, to really let us know how the house had been changed against her will almost, but also how it had changed um, how it had stayed the same really, and it's, you know, what time had done to it. Um, she also pointed out that these stairs, which are covered with like a leopard print broad loom almost, were not her choice, but the choice of um, Justin and Colin. She then invited us into the living, nope, sorry, not the living room. We left the living room, we entered the kitchen. Um, and she also pointed out that this ceiling treatment, um, pressed tin tiles was the choice of the renovation show, but we didn't stay too long on that. She really brought us in here to show us these two artworks of Joyce's that she had. And while I can't remember the name or even the content of, of the smaller drawing here, I do remember that um, this piece, the circular piece, um, which has Whelan's kind of, um, I don't want to say trademark, but something she's quite known for, um, these lithos of, of lipstick lip prints. Um, this piece in particular is called Squid Jiggin' Grounds. It's from 1973. It's a litho on paper, edition of 50. And Jane was so, so very proud to have it in there. Um, she had gotten it at auction and she made a real point um, to tell us that she didn't have a ton of money, but it was really important to her when she could afford it and find it to have um, pieces of Joyce's um, in, in the house. 
from there, she took us outside and showed us her incredible backyard, which didn't quite look like this when she showed us, but of course this is Ron Riemann's photographer's take on, on this place. No doubt some filters are, are on this image, but um, these birch trees, I was lucky enough to come across uh, an image of them soon after I met Jane. And I remember sending this image to Jane being like, hey Jane, look, it's your, uh, it's your birch trees, or Joyce's birch trees. And in the book that I found this in, um, they had mentioned that Jane had planted these with her friend Monroe Ferguson. I wonder if Monroe Ferguson goes and visits them. The photo from earlier. Very healthy birch trees. All right, so. The tiny yard bare, save for the trees, in stark contrast to the real estate tour with landscaping, potted ferns along the porch railing. We didn't spend a whole lot of time out here, but it was nice to see those birch trees. And so then Jane led us to the hallway uh, to take us upstairs, and she didn't bring us to the basement. So, um, we actually aren't able to view the basement. Uh, the only way we're able to view the basement is from, oh, hmm. They click around on the map function on the website. No, nope. main, second, third. Interesting, we can't even access it from this, uh, huh, from this little sort of map over here. Interesting, I guess seeing basements um, in virtual tours or interactive tours of realtors isn't that important. Um, I did get to see the basement once and that was in 2018. Um, as I said, it wasn't, it wasn't with Jane and that is fine. So Jane then took us up the stairs and the first room we went into was this room. And I'm gonna just guide you uh, back here again to locate ourselves. So those are the birch trees that Jane planted with her friend Monroe. Oh, I hope I just said Joyce. Just as a, a disclaimer, um, Joyce Wheeland, uh, Canadian artist, uh, experimental filmmaker, Jane Rowland, uh, amazing woman, PR, you know, she worked in PR, very different women, um, but so deeply entwined in my mind and, and such sort of similar names, I, the J's, I guess, that I often get them confused. So I apologize about that. Um, one other thing that Jane told us, um, besides pointing out the birch trees again, is that when she moved in before this floor was redone by Colin and Justin, um, and she didn't mention what kind of floor it was, but uh, she had said there were paint drops on the floor because while Jane used this room as her bedroom, Joyce had used it as her studio. So there were paint drops that, you know, from brush to canvas would have, would have liberated themselves um, in the name of Joyce Whelan's creativity, imagination, drive passion, desire, rage, all of it. Um, then we go this way. I will just, oh, we went too far. There's a, a haunting going on. We're being told which way to go, which I don't mind. I don't mind. Um, I want to just peek into this bathroom very quickly. Um, I'm not even going to say anything about it. Let's just say those aren't original tiles. Blue floor, um, patterned like rippling water. And then the next room we went to was the third floor, which is an attic. Um, here we've got those drawers that uh, Jane had told us about or that had been removed to allow room for the TV. So she did keep them. Um, when we were up here, it really didn't look that much like a bedroom as it does now. Um, I'm imagining everything that's sort of like hidden behind this um, folding wall was sort of out in the open. And in particular, there were two wooden cassette tape racks that were leaning up against this banister. And I can't remember what I said about them um, or what got Jane to gift them to me, but she did. And uh, they were cassette racks that belonged to Joyce that Jane held on to and couldn't seem to get rid of, even though she said herself she no longer had audio cassette tapes. Um, and if you've seen those kind of 
those racks before they're they're very particular it takes a very particular kind of object to um to fit into them and uh I didn't take them. I said, thank you. I said, I wanted them so badly, but um, I had just moved into an apartment, a new apartment with Kate, and we had absolutely no room. And while I would have found room, um, I really wouldn't have, and Kate would have been upset. Rightfully so. Anyways, I move on. This is the last room that Jane took us to, and this is a room that Joyce had used as her bedroom and Jane used as her studio, and by studio, I mean her office. Again, I think this is the third time I've mentioned this. She worked in PR, so she was uh, very good at returning emails, which I'll always remember that. Um, and yeah, so she worked here, and she pointed out a few things to us this kind of an incredible colic, uh, flowery, viney trim that goes around the entire room. Um, she said, at least I think she said was painted by Joyce. It might've just been put up by Joyce. Um, it looks as though it's actually painted on the wall as opposed to, you know, a wallpaper strip that's um, pasted on. And this incredible sort of object, this, uh, sun bleached valence valence um yeah i imagine it used to be quite a bright pink you can sort of see a bit more of the color on the underside um the glorious ravaging sun has done its has done its business on the outside and it's interesting it looks more like a jacquard now but for the longest time i remembered it as a moire um, yeah, it really does look like a jacquard. Hmm. So, yeah, I love this room. I love, I love the image of Jane working in there with Joyce's place of rest right behind her. And by the looks of it, not much, you know, has changed. Perhaps like a new comforter, perhaps some new pillows. But you know, that might even be staging. I can't, I can't quite remember. So once we left that room, we stood around for a little while in, uh, on the landing, on the second floor landing. And to kind of give you an idea of what this space looked like at that point, there were, and I can't remember how many, but definitely more than just one layer of um, hooked rugs that were hanging on this banister. Um, I asked Jane about them and she said she collected them but hadn't had the time to hang them up. And right here, um, something way more unexpected than hooked rugs um, were slabs of marble. Um, yeah, just slabs of marble. I think there were about three or four pieces, and this was not spectacular marble. It was. Um, it looked like you know it would be used for um, a countertop or something like that. And I asked Jane about the marble, and she told us that uh, when she moved in. Um, just before she moved in, I should say, J Joyce's estate and some of her family had come through the house and taken, you know, the objects that they wanted, they needed, that they felt had some sort of value or cultural value um, that like an archive might want. But then there are quite a few things that were left over, uh, thinking about that head uh, in the living room that's on um, the bookshelves. Um, that would have been left over. And this marble was just left there. And... You know, after Kate and I left that day, um, I thought about that marble a lot and I wondered why she had just left it there. Um, because when I asked her about it, she immediately offered it to me. She's like, oh, you like this? Do you want it? You can have it. It's Joyce Whelan's marble and I want you to have it. Please take it. And um, of course I said, yes. I was like, oh my gosh, of course. Just wanting a little piece of Joyce Whelan. And, um, really that, not needing marble, not being a, a sculptor, not being a marble sculptor, not being a mason, a stone mason, um, not really knowing what to do with marble, but I just wanted this um, piece of joy so badly. And, and also Jane, you know, as the sort of conduit between um, Joyce Wheeland and myself. Um, but to get back to what I was trying to say, I was like, oh, you know, that 
Mirabel could have stayed there for so many reasons, partly as a reminder of Joyce Wheeland, the person who had like inhabited this house and this, you know, important, amazing, critical, radical, angry, loving, you know, artist. Um, but also Marble's heavy and she lived in this house alone. And, you know, it's quite possible that she just was never able to move the marble, right? Things move up, people move up, objects move up, smells move up, and sometimes they don't go down. The image jumps to a different room than back. Oh, here we are, the haunting again. So we'll go back downstairs. Um, we'll go back downstairs. Let's see the best way to do this. The carpet on the landing and mm -hmm. stairs are a cheetah skin print. Here we go. All right. So I was um, high on my new inheritance and... Um, Jane told me, come when you have a chance to get it, come when you have a vehicle with good shocks, come when you have strong people, men, I believe she said. Um, I don't know why I just did that for men, but uh, it felt like a moment um, to come get the rest of the marble because the rest of it was in the basement, which we never got to see slowly dimpling the earth. The way she described the amount of marble was just, it actually, I will show you what it got me thinking of. So the way Jane Rowland described Joyce Whelan's marble in the basement of her house had me thinking, oops, let me try that again. Had me thinking, this would be my life. Archival images showing people atop enormous cliffs of marble in a quarry and hauling giant hunks. Large, huge, huge, unmovable, of the earth, the earth, trillions of years old. I was just like, oh my gosh, this is out of control. This is out of control. My new inheritance. Oh my goodness. Back to the browser where we stand just inside Joyce's gray blue front door. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So Kate and I left that day. Um, Jane had invited us to stay, have a little glass of wine, but um, Kate and I were going to the AGO to see Keith Cole perform, and that was just too great to pass up. So we said, thank you so much, Jane. Thank you for Joyce's Marble. Um, we'll be in touch. And we left, and Jane and I emailed a few times over the next while, and then she passed away. And the next time, I know I've already said when she passed away, but just October 31st, 2017. And I learned that by um, her obituary in the Globe and Mail that Kate actually found for me. So the last time I was at this house um, was about a week before Kate and I were moving to Los Angeles. Kate had gotten a job. We pulled up and I went across the street to say goodbye to this house. Um, to say goodbye to my marble, which was still in the basement, and to just pay my respects. And I looked in this window and I saw that the shelving, that halo of shelves, and the, the bookshelf with a little head had all been taken out. It had all been renovated. And this was, you know, this was the kind of infrastructure uh, that Joyce had put in, that Jane had, had been so um, adamant about and fought for. And I was raging, really. I was livid. I was like, ah. So I knocked on the door. The door was answered. Words were exchanged. I went downstairs. And I left. And I left that day without my marble for so many reasons. Um, for so many reasons that are still becoming clear to me. But, you know. I didn't need that marble. I needed the gift from Jane of Joyce's marble more than I needed the marble. And yeah, Kate and I headed off this way to go see Keith Cole. On the sidewalk outside the red brick home, the screen now blank white, the cursor moves, a text box is added, typing out the credits line by line. The weight of inheritance 
cruising Joyce's house. By Hazel Meyer, 2020. Thank you. Kate McKinney. Helen Reed. Cheyenne Turians. And Jane Rowland. Text deleted, snap to black. <laughs>